I'm a city councillor uh, with the Socialist Party in Cork. Uh, I thought McGregor's introduction was excellent and has hit a lot of nails uh, on the head for me. There's three points of suggestions that I want to raise in the discussion. First of all, I think that when those first meetings are held, there are a, a number of people who would be fine about going knocking on doors and talking to people. But I think there's an awful, an awful lot of other people who would say, give me a, a bunch of leaflets and I'll put them around on the street where I live. And I think that's fair enough and we should facilitate people in that regard. But that could involve an awful lot of uh, leaflets. You get 10 people volunteering like that at a meeting, you distribute 200 leaflets in two hours, that's 2,000 leaflets, right? So I think maybe at the start, groups may have to photocopy or produce their le leaflets locally, but I think that's a powerful argument in favour of a national leaflet or a national newsletter, and I would ask that the National Steering Committee would look at that quite quickly. Second of all, the idea of a membership pledge. I've raised that with a number of people, um, and I know that uh, some of the other comrades have raised that with a number of people as well. People who would be sympathetic and open to the campaign. We've noticed that at this stage, at this stage, there's a little bit of a hesitancy among a significant area of people about a pledge. It's like it's almost like a legal commitment for something that they would do maybe next March, something like that. Uh, and I think it might be a better way to skin the cat if we were to say to people at this stage, we want you to join a campaign. Right? It's a little bit of a nuance of a difference, but it can be a significant difference. I think you can get more people on board in relation to that. I'm in favour of offering the window sticker, I think that's a great idea. The car sticker, I think that's uh, a great idea. And I think we should consider, I think we have to consider, the idea of like a membership card, it's like a, or, or a token, a badge of identity for the campaign. And I think it would be a way of raising funds for the campaign as well. And I do understand that there might be a nervousness or a hesitation uh, in some areas about the idea of going out the doors and asking people for money. But I think if you take the ethos of the campaign and what we're doing, this is your campaign. We're not going to fight it for you. We're not going to win it for you. You have to fight it yourself. And that means funding your own campaign. We're not providing the leaflets and the posters coming down from the sky. You know, you have to fund that in order to build a campaign. And I think we should look at the idea of a membership card, maybe a five euro charge, and it would help pay for the likes of the national newsletters and the window stickers and the car stickers. There's going to be an awful lot of finance involved in that. Final point is this. The idea of demos. Uh, I love demonstrations. Different people love different things, right? Wayne Rooney loves scoring goals. Gregor obviously loves goals to the barber every week, etc., etc. <laughs> I have a personal love of demonstrations. I'm not sure if I'll be recommending to the campaign in Cork that we have a massive demonstrations this side of Christmas. I think the National Security Committee certainly should consider a demonstration on the doll when they're, when they're debating the legislation uh, of penalising people, etc., etc. But for me, the priority is calling the local public meetings, getting those leaflets out on a mass scale in your area, knocking on the doors, making the arguments, convincing people, signing up to uh, people's membership, if that's what we agreed to do. If a demonstration is something that would be done instead of that at this stage, I would say no, right? If it can be done on top of that, fair enough. But I think the priority, the bread and butter, is we're laying the foundations, and the foundations is that detailed work in the communities at this uh, stage. Thank you. With uh, people from Fall Profit and the United Left Alliance in the Dunleary area. Uh, I just want to apologise because I, I have to leave. Uh, there's a, an anti war debate that's going on uh, across the road, so I just want to apologise and, and say a quick few words. I, I just want to agree very strongly with what uh, Gregor and others have said that uh, I think we have learned um, from the previous battles, and I think the thing that is most important is that we have to break the campaign down to the most local level possible uh, uh, with the maximum involvement, participation and ownership of the campaign devolving down to people, ideally at an estate by estate basis, not even just wards or constituencies, but at an estate by estate uh, basis so that there are groups of people in those estates taking responsibility uh, for the uh, running of the campaign. Because what Gregor said, uh, I think is right, that uh, the, uh, often with the best will in the world, uh, people from the uh, political left will take on responsibility uh, for things uh, and it can encourage the view among new people that come in that somebody else is going to do it for them. And that will be our own doing. There's absolutely no question. Uh, we have to have the majority 
on our side. And we have to have the majority actively uh, involved in order to win. We cannot win it without that. Um, so the question of uh, build, devolving down to, to the most local level and at sort of uh, local level, where it's, you know, if you take somewhere like Dunleary, there has to be a steering group in Dunleary that has representatives from every single estate possible and if possible committees on the state, uh, by a state uh, basis. Uh, so that there's really mass involvement and mass ownership of the campaign. And I think if we have that, we get the confidence. If people sense that that level of organisation exists, then that will give people the confidence to deal with the intimidation and the uh, clever tactics uh, that they're, they're going to try and throw at us to undermine, divide, uh, to sap the confidence of people about the possibility of winning uh, the thing effectively. Uh, I agree with Nick that uh, there should be no question about demonstrations being uh, a substitute for that level of organisation. Uh, and, and I think that we have to start with that level of organisation at the lowest possible uh, level. However, I do personally believe that demonstrations can be an important part of, and should be a central and important part of, giving people confidence about the sense of the scale uh, of the campaign, because they do give people confidence, in my opinion. That's one of the great strengths of demonstrations. They have to be matched with, linked to organisation on the ground, but numbers give people confidence. Uh, and I think we do have to be looking for opportunities for mass mobilisation. Uh, obviously, the other thing is uh, the unions. Uh, I think we there is a crack beginning, I think. You can begin to sense in some areas there's a crack beginning to open up between the rank and file who accepted the leader of more or less made the points that have gone to make the revelations that are organising. I just, well, people in this room and a lot of people were involved with us in the campaign against the water charges in the 90s, even uh, prior to that in the 80s. Uh, issues came up on, in the earlier session where people said, what will happen if I don't pay? Will it be uh, a burden on my house. But I tell you, the amount of burdens that I have on my house, uh, but I'm not worried about them because it, it's, it's my children eventually will be the ones that will have to go to the I tell them that on a regular basis. So, critical mass, I think, is, is, is what this campaign is about. Uh, and I'm going to tell a story that uh, I've told a few people before about critical mass. What we did in the uh, anti water charge campaign around the state uh, in Greenhouse, uh, after the initial public meeting, we asked people to take responsibility for their own role, or if they lived on a big road, to have uh, three or four people take responsibility for that road. They initially started to distribute leaflets, and then when we came into the, uh, the idea and, and embraced the idea of having a membership, uh, they went around the road to the membership. Pounds and flowers bloom. But you know, if someone wants to put on a, a meeting in their own particular estate, they should just be able to run with it. Because I think that's precisely the type of philosophy that you need in order to build a mass campaign. That you can't prescribe uh, the type of actions that people want to take, but also that relates to mass mobilization. I don't think anyone here was counterposing 
uh, non planned mass mobilization. I think people seeing, were seeing mass mobilization as a means by which people would have the confidence to continue with non payment. Because I think if you think that uh, information is the way that people get confidence, in other words, if we tell people this will happen if you're jailed and this will happen if you're going to court, well, that's saying giving people information will give them confidence. But if giving people information gives them confidence, well, we just write the word revolution on a billboard out there and get one. But I don't think that's how people get confidence. I think people get confidence by mobilizing and take, taking things into their own hands. And I think sometimes that what happens is the people that fight for a long time uh, can get tired. And the new people that come into our campaign can sometimes leave the head in. And I think we should expect that working class people shouldn't be patronised or referred to as foot soldiers because I think they leave the head of us because the anchor is out there. And I think people will want to chase their local Fine Gael or their local uh, Fine Gael, their local Labour TV. They will want to occupy their clinics. They will want to protest. They will want to take those kind of actions. And I don't think we should be uh, pessimistic to the extent that people can take these campaign into their own hands. So I think our philosophy should be let thousand flowers bloom, Whatever anyone wants to put on a campaign, uh, you know, if that's anarchism, well then I'm probably an anarchist. Speak as I've seen them, so there's no, there's no favoritism here at all, okay? Um, but you need to look around the room, Kieran, because you're not looking over here. There, but I have a list here of almost 10 people that I've already seen, okay? I have noticed people, I've now seen you put your hand up. Go to Mata Goods. We have from the past who might spend a couple of songs in our day and good luck uh, to areas on the north side there on the issue of the household charge. And to be honest, I've never seen people walking up to the table with such fierce determination and putting their name down. They just, as Paul said in the fourth session, people don't have the money. They, they can't pay and they won't pay. Do you know what I mean? People are squeezed. At the end of the week, that could a union survey that said when people pay the utilities, they're left with about 20 euro on a weekly basis. People don't have it. You know, so I do think that this whole notion that we have to give the working class confidence in a certain respect we do because we've been through a lot the past three years. But in another way, I see that as I see I've been talking one to one with people that are, that are fucking every side of the lounge, and they're not going to take it. And I think we have to facilitate that. That's what we have to do. So I think you know, particularly in this country, well, I can only speak for this country. Uh, the left is small. This country is small. But the left is very small, and we have to get up meetings, as Gregor said. Uh, we have, they have to happen everywhere, hundreds of thousands of estates. If there's 1.6 million homeowners in this country, we'd be knocking on the majority of those doors. So I do think that, even though we are the forces in the room are small, I do think that wherever we have people willing to put on a meeting, that that should happen. And then, of course, it feeds back into the, the national movement with the committee. You know, the, the flow of information should you know flow easily and quickly that everyone's aware that meetings are happening. But folks, we do have to hit the ground running on this. We do have to go everywhere. Because, you know, if it's Dublin base or Waterford, you know, we have to spread out into every county. And uh, really, you know, I do think we have to start that right away. The second point would be, like, there is a lot of hard work ahead, you know, knocking on all those doors, not all the states, anyone who's gone through an election or a previous campaign, like yourselves. I haven't, personally speaking. But uh, as James said, you know, there's going to be lots of new people thousands of new people with new ideas flooding into this healthy uh, national movement. The second point to make, if, if it is as taken that the strategy is uh, from the introduced December's budget, it'll be implemented January and then after three months, March, the, the 10 year old per month fine was starting corn. I do think in that period of time, when we have been doing all the good hard groundwork, that we do look to put on like a national mobilization. The, the working class in this country has to bear its seat. We have to show them, we have to show the people in the dock that we ain't gonna pay it, we can't pay it and we won't pay it. So I do think we lay the groundwork, of course we do, uh, put in all that hard work and uh, I'd say maybe February, March next year perhaps, we should look to have a national demonstration in Dublin. Okay? Thank you.